In this episode of MSA Rental Trends, we are going to be looking at the Minneapolis rental market for multifamily properties. So as you can see, we have the Minneapolis metro statistical area drawn out. And if I kind of scroll out a little bit here, we can kind of get an idea of where Minnesota and Minneapolis is located. Uh, here is Milwaukee, Wisconsin down here, Chicago, Illinois over here. And then you can see we've got Nebraska, Denver, um, and Kansas City is down here, St. Louis in the faint bottom down there. So let's take a look and, as usual, see what filters we're going to be looking at today for the Minneapolis market. As usual, we are excluding all corporate, all military, all senior, and all vacation, and we are only including market and market affordable so that we are only looking at conventional apartments. If we go to location, you can see that we are in market, metro statistical area, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So let's take a look and see what the class A, B, and C combined asset classes looks like in the analytics. And then we will look at each asset class individually. So here is the supply snapshot for the Minneapolis, Minnesota metro statistical area. You can see there are 6,630 properties in this market, totaling 269,144 units. There is still 16,058 units under construction. And in the last 12 months or in 2022, 6,577 more apartments rented than went vacant, otherwise known as absorption. And in 2021, 12,347 more apartments were rented than went vacant in 2021. So it looks like that our 12 month absorption is definitely slowing and our vacancy rate is showing us that a year ago we were at 5.9%. Today it is only at 7.2%. We had a slight tick up in year over year rent growth from 1393 to 1418. And as usual, we will not be looking at the capital markets. We will only be looking at the space market or looking at our supply side for rental data. If we come down, we can see that the long-term occupancy average was 94.56 over the last 22 years or 94.5%. And if we look over here, we can see that it is currently at 92 and three quarters percent. So well below that long-term occupancy average. So it looks like with construction still happening, absorption slowing, slight rent growth, and below that long-term occupancy average that the Minneapolis, Minnesota market might be one of the first upper Midwest markets that we're seeing that could be in the recession phase. But let's go take a look and see what the data shows us first. So here is our rental analytic data for all three asset classes in the Minneapolis metro statistical area. As usual, we will not be looking at asking rent. We do not care what the owner is asking, we only care what they are collecting. So we will only be looking at effective rent. We started Q1 of 2022 at 1386, went up to 1407, and then the downtrend started 1400, and then down to 1395, albeit small uh, increments down, it is still showing a fracture between that second and third quarter. So that inflection point of affordability has potentially been hit. If we look at our deliveries and absorption, we can see that 2,927 were delivered, 2,800 absorbed in the first quarter. Not bad absorption. We'll buy that for a dollar. 2,694 in the second quarter, and then 2,274 absorbed. So still not too terribly bad, but then things start to go awry. 4,400 in the third quarter delivered, and only 2,183 absorbed, which explains our break point between the second and third quarter. And that continued with another 1,153 delivered and only 180 absorbed. So definitely seeing that downtrend happening. And we can see that the occupancy was at 94.1 and went all the way down to 92.9. So uh, we are definitely seeing a downtrend in this market, both in a slowing to almost uh, complete stoppage of absorption 
uh, and decline in rents for all three asset classes. Let's see if there is a single asset class dragging it down or if uh, one or if they are all three dragging it down together. So let's go take a look at our class A space first. Here is the class A rent analytic data. There are 280 properties in the market totaling 42,660 units. We are looking at effective rent. First quarter, they were at 1816, went up to 1857. And then as with all asset classes, started trending down and are trending down a little bit larger than we saw in uh, all three combined. If we scroll across to deliveries and absorption, we can see 1255 delivered in the first quarter. 1413 absorbed, so not bad there. 562 delivered, 798 absorbed, so that is good. 1832 delivered, uh, 1294 absorbed, not too terribly bad. So look, not bad absorption. Um, it's interesting that the rents have gone down the way they have, even with absorption kind of hanging on. If we look, we started the year at 88.6% and we finished the year at 88.4%. So only a 0.2% uh, decrease in occupancy or a 0.2% increase in vacancy. So not too terribly bad uh, considering the rent declines we had. So that's a little interesting and a bit of anomaly. But let's take a look and see what the class B's are trying to tell us. So here is our class B rent analytic data. There are 899 properties totaling 81,907 units. Looking at the effective rent, we started first quarter 2022 at 1517 up to 1535 and then uh as with the other data that we've seen between the second and third quarter, that inflection point is hit and it goes down to 1525 and then down very very slightly to 1524. I'd even say stabilized at 1524 for the Bs. Let's scroll over and look at what our deliveries and absorption tell us. 1622 delivered, 1456 absorbed. Not bad numbers. 1886 delivered, 1577 absorbed. Again, not too terribly bad. I remember I like to see it about 80% uh, or more, and that's pretty close to that. Then we had 2464 deliver and only 1338 absorb, so not very good there. And then 593 deliver and 351 absorb, so um, not terrible, but you know not the greatest in the second and third quarter. Kind of held their own in first and second quarter, but we did have quite a bit of a jump. So this Class B market is sensitive to the absorption as we can see in the data here with 93.1 in the beginning and then 91.5 ending uh, the year. And that is because we weren't really over at any period. Um, we were close in the first quarter, but then, you know, it definitely started to slow, but, you know, not too terribly bad, uh, but enough to drive our occupancy down to 91.5, which is what uh, is causing our rents. Now we can see that 91.7 to 91.5, we only had that $1 decrease in rent. So that would definitely explain that. So interesting tale happening uh, in the class B market as well. Uh, a little bit different in class A where the absorption was a little stronger, but the rents went down a little harder. So it tells me we may have been hitting an affordability problem in this market uh, but we'll see what the class C data tells us and then come to a conclusion. Here is our class C rent analytic data. We can see there are 5,151 properties totaling 143,099 units. Looking at effective rent, we had 1,127 in the first quarter, up to 1,140 in the second quarter, up to 1,144 in the third quarter, and then down to 1141. So we didn't hit that inflection point until between the third and fourth quarter, albeit really small trends between second, third, and fourth quarter, probably looking at a little bit of a stabilization here. You can see that the effective rent per square foot did not change. Let's see what the absorption is telling us. So if we look, we can see that we had negative absorption across the board. But look at our occupancy. Our occupancy is still pretty high at that 95.1. I know at 94.5, we are at 
long-term occupancy average. So this is starting to approach that long-term occupancy average. So that does not surprise me that the rents reacted the way they did with vacancy being this low, occupancy being this high. So I think it definitely confirms that the Minneapolis, Minnesota metro statistical area is on the bottom side of the long-term occupancy average in between recession and oversupply. So oversupply being on top, recession being on the bottom. It is slightly further down into the recession phase. And even though we had a 2% dip below that occupancy average, I think it's it's probably sitting in between that first point and the occupancy average, not quite on it because it is a 2% drop below it, but the rents just aren't falling fast enough yet for it really to matter for it to fall down into that recessionary zone, even though we are seeing negative absorption in the class C's, but we're still absorbing in the A's and B's. Uh, B's holding its own in the rents the best other than the class C's but I think we'll start to see the Class C's come down as the occupancies continue to drop. So that's going to do it for the Minneapolis, Minnesota market. Stay tuned tomorrow for a much-awaited market, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I will see you guys tomorrow.